Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be setting up an analog clock which you can see on screen right here. So in this example mine is the exact time it is for me but we can set it up to whatever time you like in any country you like or a custom time for you as well so maybe it's showing your day night cycle time in game. But we're going to be setting up this analog clock which you can see here. The seconds are updating and the hours and minutes will also update accordingly as well. So you'll see in 15 seconds roughly it's going to update the minutes as well. So with this one you can see it's every single second is when it updates. We can modify and change it a little bit so it updates more smoothly. So it's say every half second instead. But this is what we have today. You can see as it went over the minutes updated too. And this is also very easy to customize and build upon as well. So you can change the static mesh if you like. This is just a very quick one which I made in Blender this morning which I'll leave a link to in the description down below as well and you can obviously build upon this same one which I've got because as you can see the hands, I've just simply done a cube, I haven't made it look fancy or anything like that. But this is what we're going to make today so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first step you want to take is you obviously want to import your static mesh which you're going to be using for your clock. So again I'll leave a link in the description down below to the one which I made in Blender. What you want to make sure you have is the clock face the hour hand, the minutes hand, and the second hand if you're using that, all the separate meshes so you can individually move the different hands together to again obviously change the time. So that's very important, you want to make sure these are separate meshes, which is why I made my own one in Blender just because I couldn't find one perfectly like that. So again, feel free to use my one if you want to. And once you've imported your meshes and materials and all that good stuff, we're going to want to create the actual blueprint. So I'm just going to right click in my content browser, go to blueprint class, create an actor, I'm just going to simply name this one clock BP, or I'll give it a different name, clock BP1. But obviously just name this whatever you like, and I'm going to open this up straight away. In here we want to add in our different static meshes for our clock. So I'm just going to minimize this like so, so make sure I can still open it. Go to meshes, select all of my clock meshes which I want to use. Go back into my blueprint, add component, and add static mesh, multiple assets, and now you can see it has added all of the clock meshes in here like so. However, they are parented to each other, so when the hour hand moves, that's also going to move the seconds and minutes too, which we don't want. So we just need to unparent these. So we can very simply do that by just dragging them onto their parents, like so, to unparent them, and now when they move, they will move individually, as you can see there. So I selected the wrong one. If I select the minutes, you can see it was rotating separately. We'll compile, save, and that's all we need to do in the viewport, because again, we've just added it in. So we'll go to the event graph now, delete event tick, and then begin overlap, but keep event begin play. So how we're going to do this is we're just going to simply rotate the hours, minutes, and seconds hands based upon the actual time. So I'm going to start off with the hour hand. So we'll drag in a reference to our clock hour hand here. And out of this, we're going to set relative rotation. Like so, connecting that into event begin play. I'll do the rotations in a second, I'm just going to get all of the set rotations which we want. Again, making sure it is set relative rotation, not world. Then we'll get the minutes hand, and out of this we'll set relative rotation once again, connecting into there. And then finally, last but not least, we want the second hand, which is also a set relative rotation, like that. And then after this, we want to make this a loop, so it's going to be continually updating the clock as time passes. So after this, we're going to hold down D, left click to get a delay, connecting in there, and the duration we're just going to put as 1. We don't need it to be any quicker, because our clock updates every 1 second, so does time, unless of course you're doing milliseconds as well, but I'm just going down to as far as seconds. And you don't want it to be any longer than 1 second, because then the clock will start to lag behind. And so completed of the delay, we'll go straight back into the first set relative rotation of the hour hand. And I'm just going to double click the execution pin, like so, to get some rear nodes to keep it looking nice and organized and easy to read, as you can see there. So that is now the loop set up for constantly updating the rotation for the clock hands. Now we also need to set up the actual rotations to input in here, and that is very, very simple. So we're going to go down to the bottom left here, right click, and we're going to get now. You see date time now, like that. And this is just going to return the actual time on your player's computer. So if you hover over it, it says returns the local date and time on this computer. I'm going to be showing you again later on how to set it up for any time zone which you want. So out of return value, we're going to break date time, and we're going to open that up like so, because we want to use the hour, minute, and seconds. We don't need to bother with year, month, day, because obviously you don't have that on a clock, unless of course you have one of those clocks which does display the day and month, 
but I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. So we're going to come out of hour and we want to get an integer multiplied by a float. And the float we want to multiply by is minus 30. And I'll explain why now. So if we go to the viewport, and this is going to be for the hours hand, remember. So if we select the hour hand, rotate it from 12 to 1. So the rotation at the moment is going to be 0 on the Y. If you rotate it to 1, you can see it's now 30 on the Y. Now it is minus 30, but we're just looking at the difference. So we've rotated it by 30. So there is an increment of 30 degrees in between each hour on this clock. Now that may be different for you as well, so you might want to double check it, but it will probably be 30 for every single hour. So we're going to go back to the event graph like so. Now it's 30 because that is the difference in degrees between each hour on the clock face. And it's minus 30 because that is just inverting it to go the right direction. So if it's just 30, it will go backwards. But if it's minus 30, it will go forwards. So another way is doing 30 and then multiplying it again by minus 1. But just multiplying it by minus 30 is a lot quicker. I hope that explains why the number is minus 30. And then we're going to come out of the new rotation of the set relative rotation and make a rotator like so. And again, we just rotated this on the Y, so the pitch. So we just want to connect this into the Y pitch there. And I'm just going to move that over like so, making this look neat and tidy again. So we're getting the current hour, multiplying it by minus 30 and connecting that into the make rotator of our hour hand, which again is then just going to make sure we now have the correct time. So if it's going to be three o'clock, it's going to do three times minus 30, which is minus 90, obviously. So if we were to rotate our hour hand to minus 90, you see that's three o'clock. If it was six times minus 30, it'd be minus 180, which is minus 180 there. So that now works perfectly for how we want it to. So we'll go to the event graph again, like so. Now we're just gonna do the same thing for the minutes and seconds, nice and simple. So we'll come out of the minutes, get a integer, minus a float, multiplied by a float, sorry, get an integer multiplied by a float. This time it's not minus 30, it's minus six, but it's the exact same method. So if we just select the minutes hand, you see in between each minute is an increase of six degrees. So if I were to just toggle off snapping, you can see increase by six degrees is each minute. Again, it might be different for you, so just customize it to get it working perfectly. But for me, it is minus six degrees. So we're just once again going to do make rotator like so, connecting it into the correct place and value it should be into the pitch and Y like so. Then last but not least, I'm doing seconds as well. And those are the only three I have on my clock, hour, minute, second. So this one is going to be integer multiplied by a float, once again being minus six for me. Again, make sure you do double check to make sure it's correct for you. Otherwise it won't look correct on your clock. And once again, finally, last but not least, make rotator connecting into the pitch there and that is it very simply set up that is all we need to do to set up this clock working with the current time of the player's current location so if we to hit play we can see this should be working so the time for me is 20 to 3 however this is displaying 20 to 9 and i'm saying 22 it's obviously 37 minutes past which is what the time is on there but i'm just rounding it to 22 and actually i've just realized that's because that's the wrong clock face. So that's actually my old blueprint. So I had to just delete that one and put my new one on here. This should have the actual time. So sorry, that's my bad. I was looking at the wrong clock. So now if I go here, you can see it's going to say 20 to three, which it technically does. As you can see, it is 22. And at the moment it's two. So that looks like it's saying 20 to two. Now, the reason why that's happening is because it's only updating the hour every hour as well. So we are actually going to want to change that a little bit so it updates sooner so it doesn't look like 20 to 2, it looks like 20 to 3. So let's do that now. So what we could probably do to do that is just move this maths over a little bit, come out to the minutes and get an integer to float. So to float integer like so, and then divide this by 2. So float divided by float, dividing it by 2. I'm going to move all this over a little bit. I'll do some more explanation of what I'm doing in a second. Straighten this up. And then what we can do is just add these together. Multiply by minus 30. Go into an addition. Adding that to the divide by 2. Connecting that into the pitch like so. So we can compile and save. We can see if this looks any better. You see it does. However, it has gone the wrong way. So what we'll need to do is instead multiply this just by 30. And then we will do multiplied by minus one after this. 
So once again, I'll explain in a second. If it play, you can see now that looks a lot better. It's saying 20 to three and the hour hand is closer to the three than it is bang on the two. So I'll explain what I've just done there. So what I simply did was just having it as bang on the hour wasn't looking good enough because it was just showing it bang on the hour and it will update every hour. So what I did was I then got the minutes, divided that by two and added that on to the current hour and then multiplied that by minus one. So again, this is now just 30, not minus 30. So we can then inverse it properly at the end. The reason we did minutes divided by two for this as well to figure out the difference between them is just because that is, like I say, the difference between the hours. So obviously there is minutes between two o'clock and three o'clock and we want to figure out what that is as well to display it. So doing something like this is how you can make it look a lot smoother for the minutes and seconds as well. But again, this is gonna work fine for me. So we'll hit play again and you can see it's showing 20 to two, getting closer to quarter to three now, sorry, three, not two. It's showing 22, closer to quarter two, perfectly like that. And I'll also go over showing you how to create it for different time zones as well. So you can see this right now is just the current time zone the player is currently in. However, what we can do to get it to a different time zone is delete the now and we're instead going to get UTC now. So that is the universal coordinated time. So that is just basically Greenwich Mean Time. So right now it'll be 20 to two there. We'll come out of that and we'll get a minus. And we want a date time minus a time span. And we're gonna drag out the bottom and make time span. And then we'll connect the output of that minus into in date time of our break date time, like so. The rest of it will stay exactly the same. Now we could just minus the amount of hours it is from UTC. So for example, New York is four hours behind UTC. So we'll just put four into the make time span. So it'll be UTC now minus four hours. And of course you can also do an addition. So if you wanted France, for example, that is two hours ahead of UTC, I believe. So you just do an addition instead of a minus and do two. So if we hit play, you can see this is now the time in New York currently. It will be about 10 to nine. And let me just double check that by searching time in New York. It is, it is about quarter to 10. So is that what the time said, sorry? Yes, it did. It says quarter to 10. Sorry, I got that mixed up. However, no, I haven't. What we've got here is the minutes and hour hands are the wrong way around. Let's have a look at why. So what I've done there is I've just got the names the wrong way around, sorry. So you can see in my blueprint, what I've got is the hour hand I've got named as the long one, which should be the minute hand. So let me just rename that to minutes hand. And then the actual minutes hand I've got should be the hours hand. So sorry if you noticed that during the video as well. I've just named them wrong. So that's why it might have looked a little bit odd to you. So my apologies for that. That was just a simple mistake with the naming. So if I had to put this one as the hour hand, and this one is the minutes hand, this should look a lot better. So now you can see it is saying it is quarter to 10 in the morning. And then if I were to just change this back to be my time, so I can just then input now into here instead, you'll see it's saying quarter to three, which as you can see in the bottom right of my screen, that is the actual time. So sorry about that at the very end, there's a little bit of a mistake. That was just again, a mistake with the naming. So here I've got a clock for New York and next to it a clock for my time. So you can see here we have my time on the left and New York time on the right. So once again, my apologies for that mistake at the very end, just an issue with the naming. But I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set up an analog clock, which is working perfectly with our time and New York time. And obviously you can set up the time for any time zone you like. I've just got UK and New York there like so on screen just to show you two different examples. So my apologies if this video got a little bit messed up at the end there, just made some few minor adjustments and obviously a mistake with naming, but I hope you did still enjoy this and find it useful. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.